Uh, hello guys, my name is Engage, I'm the best Zach player in Europe. I OTP the champion since season 9 and I'm challenger since season 11. Uh, I'm the only consistent challenger Zach player in Europe, picking rank 15. Zach is to me the most fun thing to play, like your jump range is so big, it's just super pleasant to move around the map, to engage from multiple screens away. You one-shot most people with one combo, the insane amount of damage, an uncleansable CC you have made every ADC say one day that Zach is OP. I often hear people say you can't carry as Zach. I mean, sure, if you play the champion as intended and get 5 CS per minute, it's gonna be pretty hard to do anything on your own, you will need your teammates. But if you're able to maximize your XP during the early game, you'll find yourself at the best place possible to 1v9 mid gate team fights. The reason I'm challenger is really because I'm able to maximize the window where my champion is OP. All my gameplay is based over minimizing the window where I'm abusable during the early game and spiking as quickly as possible so I can be OP during the mid game. Even if it comes at high costs, like being very passive early game, getting flamed by everybody, of course, it's my responsibility to prove that this trade-off is worth it and find creative engages to snowball quickly during the mid-game. When I fail to do this, I usually lose the game. Once I get my level 6 power spike, uh, about everything changes. From the weakest champion, uh, you became one of the strongest champions in skirmishes. You can start to contest objectives. Uh, gank someone without being afraid of the potential backup since you one-shot them. They're CC'd and you're not reliant and hitting E anymore. You can easily dive a bot lane with summoners from full HP as you one-shot them with a, with a full combo. Zach can feel rather unfair to play against sometimes. Thanks to his full combo being able to basically heal him back from full when he's low, he feels very, very cheap and almost cheating to play against. If you're looking for a cheap VPN, look no further than Atlas VPN. For just under two bucks a month, you get three months free and a 30 day money back guarantee. You enjoy all the great benefits of having a VPN for an incredibly cheap price. Not only does this VPN protect you from being seen, it also stops malicious links, ad trackers, and comes with a notification if somebody is trying to steal your data. Whether it's on PC, mobile, or tablet, Atlas allows you to be on multiple devices at one time with no problem. Protecting yourself from cyber attacks, unfair prices, or if you just wanna watch your favorite show somewhere, Atlas VPN has got you covered. For example, if you're watching Netflix, each region and country has their own catalog of shows. Being able to VPN to all these different countries in order to be able to watch different shows is extremely convenient whatever your favorite show may be. You can try Atlas VPN today with an amazing deal in my link in the description. Everyone knows that junglers get the most flame out of any other role in the game. It can be very hard to play this role when you feel the constant pressure from your teammates. The difference between Engage and other Zac players is how mentally tough he is. Zac is a champion that doesn't spike until the mid game. Since it takes a considerable amount of time to reach that point, the enemy jungler has a lot of room to wreak havoc on Engage's team. Most regular Zac players have an average CS score of around 5 CS per minute. A master tier Zac player will have around 6 CS per minute. Engage has an average of 6.9 CS per minute. Nice. The fact that he has an entire 1 CS up on every other Zac player close to his elo speaks volumes to how much he prioritizes farming and how efficient he is at it. If you want to be the number one Zac player, you have to be able to take mental hits just as well as Zac can take physical hits from other champions. Even if Zac is known to be a ganking champion, you ignore, ignore, ignore your team's whining and farm. Get to a point where you're strong enough to be able to carry the game. And get to that point as fast as possible. Despite Riot's best attempts at making jungle farming as simple as possible, there are still small tricks throughout every single champion in the game that allow them to make their clear slightly faster. Here's Engage's full clear, which is the fastest and most efficient way of clearing on Zac. Uh, so for the clear, I always start W of course, that's your best DPS. Always Q the Grom like this, so it pulls it a little bit, that makes you gain a couple of seconds. Try to not gather your blob when your WCD is less than one second, because it's not optimized since your blob refound one second of clear time. Engaging the walls with W auto. Always auto before using your Q spell, because it's an auto refound. And you're gonna keep your smite for scuttle. Okay, well, it, it's gonna die from my pets, don't worry. Okay, so that's it for the blue clear. Uh, so, for the red start, so it's pretty much the same as blue starts, but you Q, 
through the wall because this pulls the re the Krogs. So we're gonna make the Grump full to 400 health. Then Q blue, Q Grump, auto the Grump, and EW in the middle. It's very important to auto the Grump at this precise moment. And we're finished. We have 10 seconds before the scuttle spawn with E and smite up. Engage will generally do one full clear of his jungle and attempt one gank if a lane is set up for it. Generally, he will not gank more than two or three times throughout the entire early game. Most of the time, he will simply reset and go through his entire jungle with a full clear. Getting to a Sunfire Keep is his first priority every single game. Since gold is so important for him to spike in the early game, getting Rift Herald often comes before getting the first dragon. Uh, mid game is where Zack starts to be interesting. So if you play the early game properly, even if you're 0, zero, zero you basically turn into god. Once you get your Sunfire, you're impossibly hard to kill. You one-shot anybody that doesn't build tankiness. And yeah, that's also why my goal is to rush Sunfire as quickly as possible. I don't build boots beforehand. I have a magical footwear in my runes. I only finish my boots after my first item. And yeah, at this stage of the game, you still want to farm, but your first priority is to find good engages from the fog, usually from the flanks. It's super important to invest in pinks. When your team is ahead, this is where uh, you keep engaging with your range and your passive. Uh, you can be super disrespectful with that since you're really hard to kill. Even if you die, you still have a passive. But when your team is behind, your champion is still one of the most useful. Zax is basically the best champion to tower defense. Your kit makes it like super hard for the enemy team to even hit your turrets and leave unpunished. Uh, if you manage to successfully engage on the enemy team under your turrets, you're definitely gonna come back the game. Tanks are not champions that people really think of as being mechanically difficult. Even though Zack's combos are not exactly considered complex, they are, however, very important to pull off cleanly. Because if you do it wrong, it gives the opponents time to be able to react and actually do some counterplay. Most used combo would be uh, max range E. You always W when you land. Auto Q, auto R. This is to optimize DPS. If you're in late game and you're afraid of being CC'd during your combo, you're not gonna use auto attacks. You're gonna just try to make the combo as fast as possible and you're gonna EWQR without auto attacks. Like this. Q on a target, then flash on another one. E in the middle of the two because you expect them to be uh, smashed against each other. And then R. Like this. Now with a third combo that is a bit rarer, but it can happen if you don't have flash for example. It can happen that the best way to uh, get to enemies is to first Q an enemy, then E on another enemy, then you have your second Q and you press R. This is especially useful when you think that you're not gonna hit your E. Just as AD carries try to play from their maximum auto attack range, you want to play from max range as Zac as well. Engage likes to let his carries push the mid wave and shadow them from behind. Instead of starting an engage, he uses his carries as bait so that he can counter the engage. If he commits an engage as Zac, the enemy team can peel and disengage. But if the enemy team is the one starting a fight, then they will have had to use their engages and cooldowns to get onto engage's carries. A counter engage guarantees that a fight will break out. And playing from max range on Zac is the best way to make it seem like your carries are stupid and unprotected. So overall, mid game is really the moment in the game where you're supposed to make the difference as Zack. And I play to not reach the late game at all, because when the game reaches late game, uh, it's just all gonna be about one flippy fight. A late game is also where it counters to your champion like Dragas, Thresh, Janna, champions like that, <laughs> like Poppy they really start to get annoying since like the only way to get a correct engage against these champions is either waiting for them to use their spells and they have very low cooldowns you might be able to engage using a combo with your flash like a q flash q2 combo or r flash but that's also very hard because if you want to use this combo you first have to get into q range and uh, you might just get one shot if you get too close depending on the enemy comp so for this reason, I really try to pick late in champ select, even though I'm a one trick, because it reduces the amount of counters that the enemy team will have. The game is often determined by one single late game fight, so you really want to make sure you're gonna have the best engage possible. You should be super picky about them. 
because well when i when i'm coaching people it's really sad because uh, the games are usually super long especially in lower elos and at some point they will just uh, lose their passions uh, and release their E button, engage when it's not the right time, and that just loses the game on the spot. So, yeah, be super picky about your engages. You should always be in E range from your carries, by the way. Always ready to fight in case they get engaged. One of the reasons that Engage is so good at engaging is his ability to mentally trace where the enemy champions are walking. In this team fight, his team is just about ready to FF. He's got a 3 and 8 Nasus mid, along with a 2 9 bot lane. Things are not looking good. He slingshots in from max range to get onto both carries forcing summoner spells. Although it initially looks like they're losing the fight, he's eventually able to pick off the jungler. The enemy team knows that this is a losing situation so they back off and retreat together. This is where Engage's real talent shines. He knows they can still win a fight at this point as long as he gets a good Engage. So instead of following through the lane, he follows through the jungle. He uses his E not to go in but to continue closing the gap and get more distance. Despite the fact that both carries were in complete fog of war, Engage is able to accurately predict exactly where the Jinx is, landing on top of her and forcing her team to peel for her. Despite the fact that the enemy team plays well, it's still not enough, and not only does Engage survive, but the momentum he gains from this play eventually snowballs a loss game into a winning one. Basically, your entire champion is revolved around the mid game. How fast can you get there? How quickly can you finish the game from there? And how much damage can you do? Zack is like a professional athlete. You want to hit your peak in your early to middle age as quickly as possible. Once you start deteriorating with time and hitting the late game of life, you're going to become more and more unable to perform and to make a real difference. With Zack, you really have to think outside the box since being low HP won't stop you from engaging. Um, even if you have one HP, as long as you hit your spells, you're gonna full CC the enemy, they won't be able to damage you during this time. You will sustain to at least 50% health. Any full combo will 100-0 an enemy ADC. They literally can't play, your CC chain is so long. In game you can really feel that power in your hands, it's just super satisfying.